congratulations on the launch. How does this new model position Xpeng then in terms of its strategy going forward, competing with the likes of Tesla? Well, Tom, thank you very much. Uh, very happy to be on the show. Um, as you know, Xpun is uh, focused on the middle market of the Chinese uh, consumers. Um, so our price range uh, is from 150,000 RMB to 300,000 uh, RMB uh, per vehicle price. Um, this P7 as our flagship product. Uh, we had a successful launch yesterday, and uh, the vehicle, as you can see, actually behind me is a sports sedan with a longer wheelbase than our first product. Uh, it's actually the size between a Model S and Model 3, um, and uh, it offers amazing driving range, uh, autonomous driving capabilities, smart uh, you know, cockpit, as well as uh, the performance and designs, uh, which I think will compete very well against the competitors. Uh, do, does it allow you to really eat into that market share that Tesla has started to carve out for itself now here in China, Brian? Well, Tesla's Model 3 in China is actually uh, priced above our range. Uh, so the Model 3 currently is priced starting at 300000 and uh, going above that. Um, I think it's a pretty large, uh, wide range. So our pricing actually is below most of our actually models are priced below 300,000 RMB. So we have some overlap, but because it's a similar size vehicle with similar capabilities, I think we will be able to compete very well with each other. Hi, Brian. This is David here in Hong Kong. As, as it, I guess it pertains to this Hi, specific price point, and Tom was just bringing up, of course, the competition with the, with the Model 3 and this new car that you guys have just unveiled. How, how large do you think this specific market is in terms of deliveries, annual deliveries this year? Well, I think uh, if you look at the Chinese EV market, uh, historically, it's dominated by these small, mini size uh, products. I would call it A00 or A0 class. Uh, those are priced below 100,000 RMB, and that's probably the majority of the market share uh, two to three years ago. But what we're seeing in the last 12 to 18 months is a market shift towards a bigger, better product, uh, especially after the subsidy has declined, uh, reduced, reduced by the Chinese government. So we expect, uh, for example, last year, the A-Class, the slightly bigger A-Class, which is where our G3 is competing, has been the one of the fastest growing segment in Chinese EV segment. And then the B-Class, which is the P7, and as well as the Model 3, actually is actually competing. In, we are seeing tremendous amount of growth as well this year in that segment. So we are very excited about these two segments that we're targeting, which is actually uh, where I think Chinese consumer seems to be migrating to. A lot of it also comes down, Brian, to, to I guess, brand awareness, brand value, and where consumers think your brand is compared to your competitors. And, you know, the, the subsidy being cut and I would imagine prices gravitating up as well. Do you think that you, you know, you're, you're, you could charge just about the same amount as, as say, a Tesla, for example, without alienating many of your, your, your customers? Well, I certainly recognize Tesla has a very strong brand globally, not just in China. And I think uh, you know when we are offering is mm. a very competitive product at a significant discount to the Tesla product. Uh, we're not the same. You know we have we're self-designed in China. Our features are squarely targeted at Chinese right. customers uh, and their consuming behavior. Um, so I think we have differentiated mm. uh, product offering, uh, but also we are competing at a price level that's you know still a discount to Tesla, recognizing Tesla's strong brand awareness. Brian, I'm just going to interrupt here quickly. A couple of lines crossing the terminal. Hong Kong's Carrie Lam, the chief executive, of course, has said that civil servants will be able to return to work from May the 4th. Civil servants can return to work at the office from May the 4th, according to Hong Kong chief executive Carrie Lam, of course. So more moves to ease up some of the restrictions that have been put in place in Hong Kong, where uh, the virus seems to be relatively uncontrolled, under control at this point. Brian, just bringing it back to your story uh, and what's happening at Xpeng, in terms of the impact of the virus, 
uh, and how that has played out for your business in terms of supply chains and manufacturing. Uh, what has the impact been? Well, I think uh, you know, in February, we saw a significant reduction of um, production and uh, retail um, overall op in China overall, but also hits the automotive sector very significantly. Uh, but also we, what we saw is actually a strong rebound um, in March and April. Um, Xpun actually opened its office two weeks uh, you know, behind the schedule in February just because of the lockdown. Uh, but we have resumed our business in middle February already. And our factory started production at the end of February as well as early March for our two factories. Um, I think uh, you know the factors that still there is first of all, I think the foot traffic in our retail stores still are not at the normal levels. So we are relying on a lot of the online sales practices, uh, which are still very interesting and successful uh, compared to uh, you know what we've done before. Uh, we actually have seen uh, orders actually hitting our you know, historical record even the month of March because we're using a lot of these online methods. The other thing is the supply chain you mentioned. It is something that we're very, very care, you know, uh, keenly focused on. Um, so far, we don't have any disruptions to our supply chain uh, given the, 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 uh, the production schedule that we have. But you know, with all the, um, uh, I would say, virus impacted global trade, if that lasts for more than three to six months, and I think that you'll start seeing strains on the value chain, uh, supply chain. So that's something we're, we're closely watching on right now. Mm. Brian, Brian, I have to ask you about the, the legal case uh, that Tesla is pursuing against a, a former Xpeng uh, employee, just very, very quickly. I know it's not against your company, a former employee. Uh, they've asked you to hand over some source code. Can you give us an update on where the company stands on this request? Well, like you said, I mean, that's uh, something I'm probably not going to comment specifically on the matters, given it's still ongoing. Uh, I want to just make a few uh, statements. One is that we're not a party to the lawsuit, as you mentioned. We actually have been voluntarily cooperating uh, with the court and with uh, Tesla uh, to provide information for almost over a year now. And then I, we feel like after a year of uh, um, uh, investigation, I think the continuous demands are, are very over, uh, we think it's overboard, uh, uh, demanded by uh, Tesla. Uh, so I think we are taking protective measures ourselves to make sure we are not bullied. Um, the other thing I want to make sure is that, you know, nothing will stop us from focused on our self-developed R&D. We're still very much R&D driven company. So uh, I think uh, all these will not stop us from continuing to invest in R&D, in autonomous driving and in our own technologies.